Well, like I said, if we were coming back from Star Bay, my wife and I just went for a Saturday afternoon uh, cruise around Star Bay, and we were cutting back across Washburn Island, and I noticed a boat had crossed over my bow, but it wasn't slowing me down or impeding my travel. At the same time, to my right behind me, I heard a boat speeding. I looked back and thought, man, this guy's really moving. Is he going to jump over the guy's weight like they do sometimes with the sea dews? Or what? The next thing, bang, he T-boned it. When he T-boned it, he glanced off and went off towards Star Bay, and the motor quit. I thought he was leaving the scene of an accident, but I, you know, at that time, I'm looking at the overturn boat, and I see a nine-year-old boy in a life jacket, and I pull him onto our boat, onto the pontoon boat. Then I see the mother, and um, she's on the other side of my, the left side of my pontoon boat. She, she starts yelling, where's the baby, where's the baby? And my wife and I are both looking in the water. We can't see a baby. Next thing she said, it, it's under the boat. So I jump in and swam under the boat, but she couldn't see anything. It's all murky. So I came back up. And by then, I guess the father had gone under the boat. And there was two other people at the back of the boat, which I felt were the grandparents. Um, he's the one that sustained the broken arm. I, I yelled for them to put some weight on that side of the boat, which propped up the side of the boat I was on. And I pushed the gunnel down, which is all broken fiberglass in and I felt the father's arm and told him to pass the baby to me, which he did, and I passed her up to my wife. Um, she's six months old. Don't think she sustained any uh, serious injuries, to my knowledge, anyway. And then we got everybody on the boat. Uh, that would be the grandparents, grandfather, grandmother, husband and wife, the nine-year-old, and the five-month-old baby. Somebody started yelling, well, we're taking the other three people in the boat to Washburn Island. I'm thinking, well, you got to come all the way from Port Perry or Lindsay to get to Washburn Island. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, we're going to go over to our side of the lake, which is Williams Point, which is where we are now, where the fire department's only two miles away. You know. By the time we got 100 feet off the shore, I was yelling for neighbors to call 911, which they did. And they all came over and assisted tying up the boat and helping everybody off it. And then, they, of course, two police officers arrived, two uh, ambulances and the fire truck from Caesarea. They all took care of them and, and they all went to Port Perry Hospital. I, uh, I assume that the people that, that hit, went over to Washburn Island went to Lindsay Hospital and then one was airlifted to some hospital in Toronto. So what were you thinking when you, when you didn't jump in the, in, in the water? Was there any thoughts going through your mind? Or? Well, I, I haven't swam in the lake for a couple of years. I was over there a couple of weeks ago and I jumped and I thought, geez, I wouldn't want to be in the middle of the lake swimming anymore. <laughs> Just I don't swim that much, you know. But when she yelled about the baby, I thought, i got to get in and look for this kid. You know, it's small, it can't swim, whatever. And then when she yelled, it's under the boat, I tried to get under there. But I didn't realize there was an air pocket. Who knows? You know, this all happened in a matter of seconds. And by that time, the father had gone underneath it. So uh, he, I think the grandmother might have still been under there or gone under with him. But anyway, he's the one that passed the baby to me. And I would say both boats are probably write-offs. Did it feel strenuous in doing this? or? No, it's, I guess your adrenaline kicks in. You know, I I just went with whatever you do. I mean, uh, I wasn't in the water that long, and the good thing about that boat is you got a ladder at the back of it, and it'll, it'll carry ten people. Mm -hmm. So uh, once we got them back here, it's just ambulance and fire department all took over. I never really saw much of them after that, having any contact with anybody. We still have the life jackets and a couple other things from, from that boat, waiting to see if they're going to call and want to pick them up. But I don't know. It's up to them, I guess. And like I said, OPP are investigating, and um, they want to talk to me on Sunday, so we'll find out then who's getting charged. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying that there's, there's no speed limit for the water. Do you, do you think that there should be? Well, I don't know how you control the speed limit. You know, the, the whole thing out there is, is obviously, you know, being aware of your surroundings and, and a, a good attitude to where everybody else is. So obviously, this person didn't see that boat, or they wouldn't have slammed into it. But that doesn't mean to say it excuses it. You know, you, you have to be cognizant of who's around you, where you're going. There is a lot of speed going on the lake from what it used to be, but there's a lot faster boats being manufactured. There's no license for it. You don't have to have a license to drive a boat. Anybody can get in there and drive a boat. What the responsibilities are, I don't know. Um, life insurance and all that kind of Yeah, I don't think you even have to have insurance on a boat out here. Do you think that made Lake Street Yard a little more dangerous than it used to be? Well, I think it is. I, I'd see more boats, obviously, in, in the last 30 years we've been up here. I've seen a lot of faster boats. I mean, people are coming up from more often to cottages. I think these people are both cottages. We're full-time residents, but uh, as are a lot of people along this Williams Point. But 
you just don't know. I mean, like I said, 30 years, I've never seen that. I've heard of accidents uh, a couple of years ago. Somebody got killed in the Narrows, which is this part here. Um, every winter you hear somebody going through the ice with a snowmobile or a truck or whatever, but not, not often resulting in death. So luckily nobody was killed in this, but they could have been. I mean, if you hit a, mm -hmm. you hit a pontoon boat, there's nothing to hide behind. It's basically a tin can and it's only a foot and a half off the water. If he'd have hit me, he'd have gone right over top of it, I would, I would think. And then, you know, who would have been injured then, so. And just being there at the time, did you think that you were meant to be there to, to save the people? Well, I don't know. We, <laughs> it was a last minute kind of decision to go for a boat ride. We'd had company from England for two weeks. We'd had a lot of boat rides, and it was kind of like, well, okay, let's go over to, usually we just go up and down this side of the lake, because we know everybody here. So, well, let's go over to Star Bay. We haven't been over there for a couple of years, so we just did a, one loop around there. We were actually just coming back and I was going to cut across towards Caesarea when, when the accident happened. So I don't know whether you know that 2011, two fishermen capsized the boat out there and they called 911 and they, they uh, were rescued. But that was in October. You got 10 minutes on that water in October and you're going to start feeling hypothermia, which the, there were two Chinese guys. One was about 30 and he kept trying to right the boat. I go, I can, you're not going to get that the right way up in time. And when the fire department finally did get them back, um, the father had hypothermia. The son, he seemed okay, but you don't last long in there in October. But you've been recognized for rescues in the past. How have you been able to just be at the right place? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know whether they contributed to Spider-Man or whatever. It's been, you know, when you got a tattoo like this <laughs> and your name's Peter Parker, you kind of got to roll with it, you know. So, uh, no, I don't think I, I did any, anybody else would have done. My wife says that you're always the first one to jump in, but. I don't know, you don't think about these things, you know, especially when there's a child involved and it's an accident, people are hurt. You happen to be there, you get perfect piece of equipment for pulling somebody out of the lake is that pontoon boat. It might not be fast, but it's a, basically it's a raft with a motor so you can get anybody you want on it. So, no, uh, just the right place at the right time, that's all. Did firemen congratulate you yet or did they say anything mm, at the time? No, nobody really said anything to me. The OPP officer said, good job. Uh, not the OPP, the Durham region. He took a, a full statement on the phone and then he said that uh, OPP, it's their jurisdiction, they'd be in contact. And um, the police officer called me, but it was late at night and he was going on to a two or three days off. So he's going to contact me on Sunday and come out and take a statement from my wife and I. But it'll be basically the same. I've told everybody, you know, this, I've told the story over and over again before times. And I don't know who they charge. I don't know who's at fault here. Um, it, I guess it's up to them to decide. Do you personally see yourself as a hero or just someone who's no, done? No, not at all. Just, just an ordinary guy jumped in. You know, I think anybody would have done that. How could you turn your back? You know, maybe if you'd been further out and hadn't seen it, but when there's a kid involved, and well, two kids, the one I pulled out first, at least he had a life jacket on. I mean, I'm now a firm believer in life jackets. I never wore one before, but I will be from now on because you just get thrown into the water. And, you know, if you're stunned, what chance do you have to swim? Uh, you got a life jacket on at least to keep you afloat, so uh, I'm a firm believer in life jackets now. Did you witness their injuries uh, firsthand? Well, all I saw was the, the grandfather was, was holding his arm, and it was a, a really bad looking angle. It did turn out he had broken his left arm. He had some cuts on his head. Um, the mother said she felt some chest pains, and the paramedics were all over laying her down and carrying her out. But uh, And then we heard secondhand that she may have ruptured her spleen, which can be quite serious. So. They're the only injuries that we kind of confirm, and then we heard other injuries to the girl, a uh, young girl on the other boat. Um, but I don't know who was driving that boat. Or I kind of, I kind of thought there were three of them, and I thought they were standing up. But I guess the, the police will decide who's at fault. You were recognized for a uh, rescue ninety four. Do you remember that story? Or? Yeah, it was a neighbor of mine down the street. Uh, I was working on the house. Some some girl came running down. Pete, Pete, can you help us? And I, down to the house I saw this uh, I thought it was a doll at first it's uh, it was Susie who was 18 months I think at the time and she'd wandered down to the lake when nobody's around fallen in and because of the chop in the water she couldn't get up so when I got down there she was unconscious and this other guy and I performed CPR on her got her breathing and she went down to uh, sick kids I got an award for that as well but again it's the right place at the right time or help and do what you can. So um, the township hasn't yet been in contact with you? Or? No, nothing so far. I've done, I don't know, maybe six or eight interviews, a couple <laughs> of TV interviews, uh, newspaper interviews. I think the one, oh yeah, they want to do a radio uh, story on Monday. They want me on CBC Radio on Monday at 12 o'clock, so, and they did another radio uh, account. 
I can't forget what, what radio is an AM radio station. So it's uh, it's kind of busy week. <laughs> uh, being a celebrity, I guess, which I didn't had no intentions of, you know. And you didn't uh, sustain, sustain any, any injuries from, from from the rescue, or? Nope, nothing for me. Just jumped in, took a look under the boat, couldn't see anything, and then the baby was passed to me. After that, we just got everybody on the boat and brought it back here, which seemed the, the right thing to do because we're the closest to. Uh, you know, the fire hall and the police and everything else. So the other three got taken to Lindsay. So the fire department or somebody must have gone to Washburn Island to pick them up. The boat trip that day was just, just kind of a spur of the moment type thing? Last kind of minute thing. I wasn't really up for it. My wife said, oh, come on, let's go. Weird things go through your head when you when you see an accident in front of you. Everything kind of slows down. Uh, next thing you know, we're on top of the boat. We were hardly even moving. That's when I saw the nine-year-old pull him in. So uh, I'd say the whole thing lasted a couple of minutes at best and then it only takes maybe 10 minutes to get over here by boat. They said the whole thing was around 5 o'clock kind of thing. Well, in the time the paramedics and the police got through everything and the ambulance and all that, uh, about 6, 6.30, the time was all, they all left. And that was the end of it. Do you hope maybe that some greater awareness of boat safety comes out of this? One of the firemen, I think he might have been the chief, said, well, we've only had a couple of boat accidents, but how many do you need, you know? I went and got a safe boating uh, certificate. Apparently it doesn't mean anything. You don't need a license out here. You don't have to have any training. You can, you can go up north and rent pontoon boats. You can go to the marinas and rent fishing boats. They don't care. I kind of wonder, should you have some kind of training or certificate? I don't know. Might be hard on tourism if you did that. You know, people wouldn't be able to come up and just rent boats and go out and have a good time on them. So it's not like you see that every day, and you certainly wouldn't want to, but you only need to see it once to realize it could have been more serious. Somebody could have been killed. I still think that the obvious factor in this was the speed the other boat was going. I mean, by the time you see something at that speed, you can't stop. You might be able to turn, but you don't want to turn in front of them. And turning behind them, it would have come really close to me. So obviously the only thing you do is slow down and stop. But you can't do that when you're going flat out in some of these boats. I mean, I've had speed boats before. And by the time you shut it off, it's still going to go two or 300 feet before it actually stops. But they hit them full tilt. They never even touched the speedometer. They just bang, hit it, bounced off, and everything went crazy. Thank you very much. You're welcome.